So let's talk about the difference between shame and guilt and what actual accountability looks like. So when you make a mistake, when somebody comes to you and says, hey, you hurt my feelings or you crossed a boundary, um, if we made a mistake and if that person is telling us that we hurt them, we want to feel, we, it's healthy to feel some degree of guilt um, and, and to take some accountability. What we don't want to do is go down the, the shame spiral, right? So let's talk about the difference. So if I say that I am going to house sit for you and watch your dog, and I proceed to, while you're away, get totally plastered and I leave the gate open and the dog gets out. And let's say the dog gets really hurt. I, you know, I, it's healthy for me to feel some degree of guilt about that. And what the, what the five or, you know, sometimes six, I say six steps of accountability look like is one, I need to get at least grounded enough and calm enough that I can be relating to you from a place of uh, attunement to what you are going through, right? So the first step, you know, pre-step, if you will, uh, is to get grounded and to get a little bit calm-ish, right? Then the, the, the second step is to own it, right? To say, I am so deeply sorry. I really screwed this up and I am so sorry. That's, you know, step one or step two, <laughs> depending on you. We'll just say step two. Yes. Uh, that really is the second step. There's a couple more. A lot of times people say, well, I said, I'm sorry. You know, what else do you want me to do? The third step is to is there a way that you can make it right? Is there a way that you can balance the scales? So if you've broken somebody's trust, there might be this period of overcorrection. Or I might say in this scenario, I, I would like to be responsible for the vet bills. I, you know, I want to try to make this right in whatever way I can. I will drive you to the vet every day. You know, I'll, I'll help take the dog to physical therapy. However, I can make this right. I want to try to make it right. The fourth step is to figure out what went wrong and then to make a plan to do something different in the future. I really have to understand what's going on for me that's deeper reasons as to why I'm getting so drunk that I leave the gate open or if it's you know the way my brain works and I have some struggle with organization or executive functioning, how do I help and track that so that I can get to the bottom of it and make a plan for really doing something different in the future. So I might say to you, you know, I, I really need to look at my issues with alcohol or I really need to, you know, see what was going on for me and I'm, I really want to commit to doing something different in the future. And then you actually have to do that thing, right? That's what accountability and repair really hinges on. Um, and then, you know, the, the sixth and final step is, oh, I'm sorry, the, five, the fifth step is to radically accept the consequences of your actions. Meaning that, you know, I would say, I totally understand if you are angry with me for a while, or if you're angry with me forever, or if you never trust me with your dog again, or never trust me again in general, I have to radically accept that that is your autonomy and that is might be a consequence of my decision. And then the sixth step is to let it go, right? To, for you to work those steps of accountability and then to try to release it. Shame, on the other hand, right? Looks like, ah, oh, I never make the right decision. I always, I'm such a screw up. I never can do that. I'm such a terrible person, I, blah, 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 right? Uh, or I can externalize my shame and say, oh, why do you know I can't handle responsibility like that? You know, I can deflect and kind of re-shift the blame to you. And that really is a shame stance. So notice that 
that healthy guilt, those steps of accountability are really about maintaining the relationship. They're about maintaining, how, centering how you are feeling because you are the one that has been hurt. Even though I might feel really guilty, you're the one that's been harmed. So attending to that relationship is the most important thing. Shame, on the other hand, is very self-organized, right? It's self-centered. It's all, I'm, a, I'm such a terrible person. I'm the problem. I blah, 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 right? And then the tendency is for the person that got hurt to tend to and take care of my feelings in that, right? No, you know, you're not a terrible person. No, no, blah, 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 right? So if you have made a mistake, if somebody has told you that they have that you have caused them harm, I really invite you to try to work these steps of accountability to hold some sense of spaciousness that you are a person that has made a choice that has caused harm. You are not inherently a terrible person, right? That's the difference between guilt and shame. All right, my dears, be well.